there is abundant evidence provided to the tribunal that within a few weeks after 30th September, the governments of the United States, United Kingdom and Australia were well aware through reports from their own diplomats in Jakarta, as well as from foreign media and some non-governmental observers, that the communists and many others accused of association with them were being slaughtered on a large scale. By the beginning of 1966, the numbers which were reliably reported to Washington, London and Canberra ranged from a minimum of 100,000 to four times that count. In April 1966, the chief foreign correspondent of the New York Times, C. L. Schilberger, described the Indonesian killings as, quote, one of history's most vicious massacres, unquote, rivaling in scale and savagery, quote, Turkey's Armenian massacres, Stalin's starvation of the Kulaks, Hitler's Jewish genocide, the Muslim Hindu killings following India's partition, the enormous purges after China's communization. In one of the fullest accounts, the experienced US journalist Seymour Topping reported his findings at length in the same newspaper in August 1966. He observed that executions were usually carried out by the military in central Java and that the people in East Java and in Bali were incited by the army and the police to kill. We note that in seeking to explain the widespread indifference to the human suffering in Indonesia, academic studies of this period placed these events within the broader international context of the Cold War, heightened in Asia at the time by the war in Viet Vietnam. The United States of America, the United Kingdom, and Australia were all complicit to different degrees in the commission of these crimes against humanity. The US gave sufficient support to the Indonesian military, knowing well that they were embarked upon a program of mass killings and other criminal conduct for the charge of complicity in crimes against humanity to be justified. The clearest evidence of this was a supply of lists of names of PKI officials when there was a strong presumption that these would facilitate the arrest and or execution of those that were named. The UK and Australia conducted a sustained campaign repeating false propaganda from the, Indo from the Indonesian army and they continued with this policy even after it had become abundantly clear that the killings and other crimes against humanity were taking place on a mass and indiscriminate basis. On balance, this justifies the charge of complicity in the above crimes against humanity. The governments of the countries referred to above were fully aware of what was taking place in Indonesia through their diplomatic reports from contacts in the field and accounts in the Western media.